welcome to Agora Studio Visit, a sneak peek into our artist's creative process. Today's vlog takes us to sunny California, into the studio of Agora artist Jerry Anderson. Jerry says about his work that it is an expression of his ongoing pursuit of discovering all that life offers. Let's hear more from Jerry himself about his inspiration and his future plans. <laughs> how, how are you, Jerry? I'm well. I'm uh, healthy and uh, having a bit more time because we don't have any dinner parties we have to host. So that adds a couple of days <laughs> a week for you. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's been, it's actually been uh, pretty interesting. And of course, my life doesn't change. And Trisha is able to do her uh, psychotherapy clients by Zoom. Her normal work days are the same, but they're here. And this has been, as Sabrina uh, was saying, it's sort of a different phase of our lives, I think. Mm -hmm. Different. It's different for sure. And um, certainly um, because of the lockdowns all over the world, we haven't been able to travel as freely or as certainly probably no travel at all at this point in your life. Other right. than internal. We can't. So we were supposed <laughs> right. to. A lot of internal traveling, right. A lot of internal travel. <laughs> I was just, well, in fact, uh, I was just started and did a couple of projects in this month that uh, sort of arose spontaneously in me. And, uh, you know, I, I had a really lovely trip to Turkey a couple of years ago before all mm -hmm. this happened. And uh, I know. In Cappadocia and all that. Well, Cappadocia inspired a lot of your paintings. You have a whole series of paintings on Cappadocia. Well, and I, I was, I've also always been interested in, in Rumi and the Sufis. And so I made a special, made sure that I stopped in Konya to see Rumi's tomb and all that. And this has been a um, connection I've had for many years, more than I like to say. And uh, as I was doing this one painting, <clears throat> this one, I've been struggling trying to find all these years a way of expressing the dervishes and through Rumi. I had done some work with that. And every time I would look at a, doing a painting of a dervish, it seemed sacrilegious somehow. And, um, and so I thought, how to do this painting? And then I realized it was for me, a pretty accurate expression of, of a part of the Sufism that I understood. So a very I, kind of... Absolutely. I mean, there's so much movement in uh, that uh, painting that that's what I think of, um, certainly. And the whirling and whirling and twirling and um, uh, the dance is what I'm referring to, obviously. Uh, but um, I like the, the the movement in this one, certainly, that you've captured. You know, I've always been interested in movement as well, you know, as ex however it's expressed. Uh, and this was, a, a, in a way, a, a more abstract yet simpler approach to showing the movement for me. And that led to mm -hmm. this canvas. I don't know how the light is on this one, if you can see this very well or not. We can, we can see it. Mm -hmm. A bit more complex, but it adds more color, a little more developed, but also a lot of movement. In a different way from the first one, absolutely. Uh, tell me about the color. Uh, what made you decide on these colors? How does this connect for you? Well, the uh, the green is, is sort of is, is I was just drawn to do it, and I, and I like doing the green and the blues and the purples together. I like the combination of that. And that was something I actually discovered when I was in college. I was illustrating a magazine cover, and for some reason, I wound up having the uh, the deep greens and the purples together, and I saw that they actually worked. They became sort of I'm not sure if they're complementary, but, but they work in the same range. Well, the very, very powerful colors that um, certainly stand on their own 
uh, without relying on each other in some way. So there's a great deal of um, sustained individualism, I think, for, for each color in this particular painting, um, as well as the uh, of movement. Um, it's, it's, it's quite good. I, I like it. It's different for you also. Uh, it's a little bit, a little bit different for you than uh, your your uh, previous paintings. Actually, this this in a way felt like it was arising from this whole shutdown, the whole right. virus, because it, right. it found myself uh, wanting to be simpler, and and things being uh, coming simplifying my life, I guess, in a way. Well, and going back. Interesting metaphor for what is going on, I think, because we've all had to think about um, we, uh, how our lives have changed, and um, and and probably ridding ourselves of superfluous activities that don't really have the meaning that we would aspire to give to them, um, because we think of our 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 days here on on earth and and uh, simplifying everything <laughs> particularly at this point i think there's a lot of introspection going on certainly um and particularly with artists i find that there's a great deal of thinking about uh their work their lives and uh, so i'm glad to hear that it certainly has had um, a positive influence on you and and um what you're creating. There's another painting. So this preceded the one called Konya that I know that uh, Sabrina mm -hmm. enjoyed when I sent her. Is it? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah, we can see it. Now tell us about this painting, Jerry. Oh, a what, desert so dark. <laughs> what can you tell us about this painting? I think in a way it's 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 a, a real development of all of this sort of complex movement that shows up in my paintings a lot. And then I think I was really needing some lightness because I was feeling a bit dark in the middle of all this. So this happened a month ago, I guess. It has a lot of up more upward mobility. Um, in terms of movement, which is certainly very uplifting and uh, not dark at all in terms of uh, the mood that you've created. And uh, the colors uh, are very cheerful uh, and also introspective because the, the, the purple, purplish, uh, from what I can see, kind of a blue color, I think reflects introspection. Um, white is very ethereal um always always wonderful colors i think that express certainly your emotion uh and what's going on in your head head and my heart and all those places yeah you know I, i've always been interested in in the old story of the veils like scheherazade and all that and and much of my work I find trying to express that where you keep seeing, feeling off the layers, or you see the layers, you go through it, trying to see yes. what's finally beyond that. You often see that there'll be a, a white spot, or there'll be something like that, that for me is distant beyond these other layers. That's pretty consistent in many of my paintings. Mm -hmm. It is. What's in the works for you? What are you planning on? Uh, I'm doing, uh, are you going to continue to focus on uh, what's going on in our lives right now, in your life, and this um, period of isolation and lockdown, or are you going to explore other subjects, other themes? Well, I'm, I'm certainly at the age now where I have the, the uh, compulsion to do whatever comes up at the moment. <laughs> and so Good that's how I, I'm serious <laughs> about that. And uh, I always struggle with the, the um, question, the dance between 
well, what should I be doing? What would be beautiful for other people and all that? Versus, well, what should I do for myself? Perfect, well, perfect my answer. <laughs> perfect answer. I agree with you a hundred percent on this one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we, um, we uh, at this point, uh, probably we should be reminded that at any point in life, we should be doing what we desire to do, and what is best, uh, what comes to us naturally, rather than trying to force something that is not about what's going on uh, in our hearts and minds. So now we, we have the luxury at this point in our lives to, to do that, and I'm, I'm happy to see that that is what you're doing. Mm. I, um, I was looking at your, uh, your work again um, and, uh, uh, and was reminded of how wonderful um, your expression has been throughout most of your artistic career in um, combining and abstracting, of course, the, the female form and combining the landscape with the human female body and the way that you've expressed um, a new form in many ways of, um, of that wonderful undulating, you know, <laughs> curvature that one finds in nature. And of course the, the, the human form. I'm just curious, have you ever considered uh, and I know I think you have a painting, the male form. Oh. No. I'm not interested. <laughs> I, I'm not certainly in, in, in life drawing. I, I've had male models and draw them and all that, but it doesn't interest me. I, I know. I don't, I don't I mean that in a sexual way or anything. It's just, it's, it's, I, it doesn't I, touch my heart. I know. I know. You're not inspired by it, but I, it, it might be interesting you know to consider uh maybe a wonderful adam and eve uh composition but in your style um i think that uh, yeah, it could be interesting and people could certainly relate to it and um anyway it just i was looking at your work and i thought adam and eve it's perfect <laughs> yeah Yes, absolutely, and, and um, you well, know, you, do you start... see, I'm sorry. You see men in my figures, they're generally in the background looking at the female form. You'll I know. I, 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 yes. You're a creature looking at the female form. Yeah, well, it could, it could lend itself very nicely because you have the garden and uh, you have the serpent, <laughs> you have the apple and the female and male form. It could be interesting. And it was just a seed, just a little seed. <laughs> when you were able to uh, to travel a bit, uh, do you have any plans for where you might uh, want to go? Because I know you love travel. Well, we had we had to cancel our trip to uh, uh, to, Lake Victor, uh, to South Africa and uh, Safari, mm -hmm. which was happening in August. We canceled that. Yeah, that um, was wise. Yeah, I think so. And then I have a yeah. trip scheduled, hopefully, in the end of September, the 1st of October, to go to the gallery for an exhibition right. for the yes. uh, Expo in New York. We'll see how that goes. Well, that's September, yeah, September 19th, and then we have our Expo, right, scheduled. Hopefully by then, um, but uh, we don't really know. Again, have you, uh, other than the, the current, the most recent paintings, uh, given more thought to how your, your work will continue to be influenced by what's going on with COVID-19? I, you know, I'm not sure. I have a, a very full internal life. And so this becomes, in, in a way, just another aspect of that. But all, all of my inspiration seems to be contained in this 
body of spirit I have, or however you want to speak mm. of that. Um, so I'm not sure. It, it, certainly, it's annoying from a physical level, not being able to see my children directly, my grandchildren, yes. see our friends. I think my my deeper interest is in expressing myself fully in this volume of, of experience and and um, experience, I guess. I was going to say knowledge and refuse to say wisdom. These things that are <laughs> in me and to see how they come out on canvas. And um, because that seems to be what I've chosen for these last 30 some odd years. And, well, I'm, 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 I'm happy to, to hear that you continue to delve into uh, your own psyche and development uh, as an artist. And that's what has been influencing you in, in your work all these years. So I think that um, for the most part, that is what uh, artists do. They reflect upon uh, what is going on internally for them and uh, find an expression, but I think you more so because you're you you're so spiritual in in your nature and you're seeking an, um, answers. I think to uh, questions that I think we to some extent we all we all have as humans. You know what what is what is this about and and. Uh, um, how do I find fulfillment in my own expression, you know, as a human being? And I think that that's very relevant, particularly now, but I think it's relevant at any time. We just have the opportunity now to really delve into it on a level that we normally haven't had because we've been forced to, to become introspective. Most people have, I think. Yeah. I like seeing your new work, Jerry. I know that you had sent along um, some photos to me of your studio space and what you had been working on, although I hadn't seen um, those newest ones with the, the green and the blue and the red and the white space, which I, I like very much. And I think, like Angela said, they're, they're interesting and in, in that although you may not have deliberately thought of them this way I think I like the way that they use the space which I think kind of connects to this scenario that we're all in as well as like you mentioned simplifying our lives and keeping it clean and simple um, so I think it's it's a fun direction um, like Angela said just that introspection and you know it's I think I'd like to see more I think it'll be a great direction so good and hopefully we'll see you in, in New York soon. <laughs> yes, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so as well. Is um, We're looking at your studio, I think, right? The, yes, it is. Wow. Can we see some more of it? And so years ago, when one of the children moved out, there was this one room that I mean, I love. It's on the southwest side of the house, terrible light. It's, it's in trees, but it's, it just it feels very warm to me. And I can see the river on both sides and look at the vineyards. In the, um, Lovely. Do you still have a vineyard? They're not, we're, not, we're, we're surrounded by them, but we sold them in uh, 1997. Ah. Uh, Tricia had developed these and uh, farmed it for 20 some odd years, and then we sold it. Unfortunately, the people that bought it kept it in vineyard, so it's as if it's ours without the work. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, is the light adequate for you, or do you have a lot of over? I see a lot of overhead lighting. I have overhead light, and and actually, um, most of the day I have a good light, and then I have to stop a man with the other. And I often will just keep the overhead lights on all day long. The only problem I have is that some parts of the year it gets too bright, the glare comes in, and I have to pull the shades down. And we keep toying with the idea of building a real large studio 
and then the epidemic comes or the crash happens in the economy. <laughs> well, the room certainly looks adequate. So it, it took one of your children moving out of that room before you developed into a studio, which is what I think what a lot of parents do. They just make sure their children are out in time so that they can have the spare room. <laughs> but anyway, oh, Jerry, it is so good to see you. I am so happy to know that you're in good health and uh, that you continue to be as creative as you've always been in your life and you're, you're producing some amazing work. Thank you, Angela, that's very kind. <laughs> and look forward to hopefully, if things clear up, we'll be back in the fall and then we can have the pleasure of seeing you in person. Thank you. Yeah. And we can have that dinner that we've been missing. <laughs> For years. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All okay. right. Well, Jerry, it's so good to see you. And um, we'll be talking soon. I hope to see you in person. Thank you for really? putting this together, Andra. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. Conversation. Thank you, Angela, for joining us. Thank you, Andra. <laughs> Right. Sabrina, so I'm good to see you. Okay. okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.